Thank you for staying with us. Let's start with the trending issue as it was for the Yoruba Nation agitator that is Sunday Igbo. So it has been for the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Namte Kanu. And Abia State High Court sitting in Omaha has ordered the federal government to pay Kanu one billion naira as damages over invasion of his father's house in Afaraku in, on the 10th of September 2017. The presiding judge, Justice Benson Aya, described the invasion as notorious and brazen, calling on political resolution in dealing with the matter. Babajide, very similar now. Yes. Um, the, you know, a lot of these human rights cases are, are difficult to win for government because once the, the plaintiff provides compelling evidence, for example, as we saw uh, in the case of Sunday Bo, evidence was seduced in court showing that indeed there was an invasion and a bloody one for that matter. Mm. I think the CCTV um, recorded all that transpired. So um, there's no way that kind of case will not succeed. So, and the judge was very, very angry with our, our security agencies. His argument was, look, we were not at war. Why should anyone go to this length? So the case of Kanotu, his father's house was invaded. He brought evidence to prove what happened. And according to the judge, little or no effort was made by the defendant to, to discountenance uh, the facts uh, presented before the judge. So the judge was left with no doubt but to let the um, application succeed. So that's what we have seen. Hmm. Um, Sam. When you look at this, the, the damages that was uh, awarded now, and um, when you look at what before now, what uh, the federal government, uh, I don't think they will pay this damage. I don't. I, I'm not sure. I'm sure they will attempt to appeal this. But the message has been passed that it was brazen. It was notorious. The invasion. I, uh, this, this judgment was given by a high court. So what uh, it means implicitly is that uh, the federal government has a chance to go on appeal, mm -hmm. and it is, well, it is well within their rights to do so. But the critical lesson to take away from this is that this confirms the old saying that the wheel of justice grinds very slowly. So I mean, this is, this is, it took almost Just four years. It took almost four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the message it, it sends out there you know, to uh, citizens, is that we should trust in our, in our judiciary to do the right thing, even though it's going to take you know, a bit Forever. of time, you know, to get some of these um, judgments passed. Um, it's a lot of money, but for me, it's, it's not as significant as the message it puts across, mm. which is that we should not take, you know, laws into our hands. Impunity cannot be the, the best way, you know, for government to deal with issues of this nature. All right? The courts are there. If anyone feels aggrieved, the courts are there for people to, you know, um, put forward their yeah, case yeah. and trust that justice, you know, uh, will be will be given on on the merit of, of, of such cases. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, now okay. the last has not been heard of the amendment and passage of the electoral bill. In a recent development, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu said the 2023 election timetable will not be released until the Electoral Act Amendment Bill is signed into law. Meanwhile, the National Assembly has passed the Electoral Act Amendment Bill after removing Clause 87, which provides for compulsory direct primary election for political parties instead of the Senate and the House of Representatives approved direct and indirect primaries as a mode of electing candidates for political parties. This is um, quite swift by the National Assembly. I don't know the arm that has done this by removing this clause. So if both arm, 
if they remove this clause, if they harmonize it, and um, if what the um, civil society organization, the Yaga Africa and Co., uh, uh, some fundamental errors, I uh, highlighted like 15 errors in that uh, act, mm -hmm. according to what they say, if they are able to just clean it up and get it to Mr. President, I'm sure Mr. President will be able to sign this act, removing this direct um, um, primary clause, that's clause mm -hmm. 87, so that INEC can start planning. We don't have time again. And the, what they basically done is to leave it to the parties to determine whether it is direct primaries that they want indirect. to adopt or indirect. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer a case of um, um, forcing parties mm -hmm. to adopt um, um, direct primary as a, single mode, like into it. as a single mode of mm -hmm. determining um, who becomes standard bearer for parties. You know that from the beginning, even the, the PDP caucus in both houses did not really like the idea. The idea uh, emanated from um, what transpired during the APC World Congresses and mm -hmm. the rest when mm -hmm. some governors literally quarantined National Assembly members and made sure that they could not even pay a part in the, in the whole thing. So they saw it as um, an attempt to destroy them politically. And they, they tried to fight back. But of course, given the structure and character of our, our politics, the president bowed to the, uh, the desires of the governors. He refused to sign. And Very uh, powerful governors. Yes, he refused to sign. And the, the lawmakers had no choice. Of course, they, they, they threatened initially that they were going to use their veto. But you and I know that this uh, generation of lawmakers do not have the cheek to... That's they don't have the cheek to, to, to use the veto on, on, the, on the president. You know, not, not under this leadership Even when they of the National of Assembly. Even yesterday about the, uh, the, the advantage of the direct government. He was lamenting, he was telling us, he was still telling us about mm. the, <laughs> the yes. advantages. Yeah. Yet, yeah, my hands are tied. You know, there is <laughs> a, a, on, on the one hand, he would want to um, see how he can save a lot of his colleagues because the governors, some governors, second time governors, are interested in the seats currently occupied by, by the Senate like President's us. colleagues. So whatever they do, they will lose out. In fact, I was with a governor who was threatening that the leading lights of the desire to help uh, uh, um, the primaries will hear from them. Yes, before the Kodama, he was boosting. He said, "Jide, you will see. Jabi, you are supporting them. You will see." You know, I was supporting having. Uh, a, a something more participatory. Yes, they do not see the average politician. Come and sit down here. And the average politician reasons like the data boys that they have unleashed on social media. They never look at the bigger picture. I'm looking at something more participatory that gets everyone involved. Very similar to how politics used to be in those so days. Especially if you identify the Shabib, you are something to do. Uh, uh, <laughs> but if you, are, if you are watching the program, they watch the program now. They knew that from the beginning, I killed behind. Because let's face it, during the Awolowo years, mm -hmm. people owned the parties. Mm -hmm. People owned the parties. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. sponsored candidates for elections. Yes. With the check of dues and all mm. that that they pay, with their, they have dues. their cards. Yes, they are proud of that card, and they were happy that to attend meetings all the time. So they, they they didn't want to be left out. But what do we have? Parties no longer sponsor candidates. Con governors have taken over. If a governor does not like your face, you will not be anything. And that's what I think that we need to resolve. Why are, are they running a task elter now, trying to resolve dispute in various states? The, it, those disputes usually arise in the months leading to the election wow. and in the conduct of the primaries. In a democratic way. Yes, when you so show people out, you expect them to be happy. No. Hmm. Sam, so the speaker said they can't afford to throw away the baby and the bathwater because something like this before, it has happened like three, four times, if you remember. Even, the th even during the third time bill, third time amendment, uh, <laughs> this, so immediately the third time crashed. 
all the, <laughs> everything the amend, constitutional amendment went with it. Mm -hmm. The same thing when the electoral amendment. Immediately, there's one problem there. Everything goes. But we want to salvage this now to make sure the president will be able to say, okay, okay, remove clause 87 and let's sign. Mm -hmm. Because we cannot afford to use the 2015 Electoral Act for, <laughs> for 2023. <laughs> 2023 election. Yeah, you, you see, I, I, I feel a sense of pity for the Speaker and the Senate President. And um, I say so because I, you wonder what Nigerians would make of you know, their conduct with respect to what has become of the Electoral Act Amendment um, Bill. I mean, the impression that was created, the period leading up to you know, uh, the passage of the bill, was that this was the best thing that could happen mm -hmm. since the creation of bread and butter. Don't you know, and, and fights. Yeah, and then, and then suddenly you wake up. I mean, you, you, get, you get Nigerians the impression that, the that, yeah, that, that, that they had the backings of the people. It was convenient to tell so us that go to go back yes, to our constituents. It, it was convenient for them to tell us the that they were coming back. We coming, we'll come back exactly. <laughs> so, so what became of the backing that they had from from the constituents? <laughs> Only for them to chicken out. Check I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. I, I don't agree that they were completely helpless in this matter. It just speaks to the character of our political system. There is a huge loss of reputation, and they must live with that. Nigerians mm. are not impressed. No, they are not. Nigerians are, are not, not impressed. Mm -hmm. many, people, can... many people back them. <laughs> yes. yes. And, and look at how they then, ended up. And then, yes. then you... The they they just back in fact, they threw the 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 people under the bus. Yes. Uh, they they can't put up a fight. Mm. They can't put up a so fight. But you see, you see, there were a lot of our colleagues. Right. People like Ayo who did not see anything in this thing. <laughs> now I can see why. There were a lot of... Because a lot of our colleagues actually predicted that this is a waste of time. Of course. You know? And this gov this lawmakers sometimes um, will want to give you the impression that they were utterly serious. You know, when the governors called for call a meeting, it yes, <laughs> you know, you know, flatter to deceive, or what's yeah. that uh, <laughs> phrase? You know, when the governors called for a meeting, they quickly they 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 they, they didn't want to have a meeting with those governors so that they would not they would not uh, commit themselves. You know, so you want to see that uh, you say, ah, these guys are serious. Look, they mean it this time. Together. And some of them boasted that, look, we may use our veto. We've seen the uh, we've seen the veto used before. You know, uh, against our yeah. but that was just that time. But many people felt uh, if something has to do with their future, mm. because it's political suicide that we are looking at now, right. that they could be pushed to then use that veto. They have the power that they are reluctant to use. Mr. Remember Mr. that speech that uh, um, this man, uh, Bonusa Senator, uh, on, on Dume. Yeah. Dume. Yeah, he, he said, we have this power. Mm. He was telling the Senate president, he said, if you do not want to do it, you, you can step yeah. aside. You know, they will give, they will make uh, recommendations, the recommendations will be uh, pushed aside and all that, you know. So, now, this one concerns their future. A lot of them will not come back. It's a very, very easy prediction to make. In politics, people, people are, are reconciled, in inverted comma, reconciled. But it doesn't get to the bottom of their hearts. Mm -hmm. So these governors, as I'm telling you, they know the the, these go governors they know, they are know. already baying for blood. Yeah. How to, now, how they, now these lawmakers who, a lot of them will survive it, I, I wouldn't really know, because, because they, they are waiting out. for them. They huh? lost out. Yes. As as totally as lost yeah, out. As, as you said, they, they, they lost, lost out. out. Because when they look at the, that recommendation, mm. and a lot of people would not say other things that we have inside the electoral act mm. so that mr president will not say it was too close to the election the way no, it was at this time. Mm -hmm. so well let's hope as he as will as not reject it mm? you know you know he didn't we didn't just get to the point when it seemed that it was too close mm. that time mm. he was seriously rejecting mm. sending the thing back to them yes. until we got so close to the election since so, 2015 mr president has not signed any electoral mm. act into law. 
2015. This one yeah. now, at least they've, they've, done, what, they've done what he wants. So that uh, they've we done hope, what he wants. So. We hope he gets to he gets to uh, endorse it. And this, you know, this calls to question, you know, the concerns a lot of people have raised about the powers, you know, that Mr. President has to exercise. Mm. Mm. You know, people they, they just mm. watch him each time he says. It's just like Mr. President waking up and telling us no to state police, and that was it. That we shouldn't even talk about it. And I listen to friends who say, you know, to whoever cares to listen, that it, it is normal. I mean, that's, that's mm. quite auto autocratic. You wake up and say, no, we shouldn't talk about it. It doesn't come for dialogue at all. And nobody, and the, nobody the national in assembly the National Assembly is not going to do anything about it. And governors are all crying all over the place. And they actually want to have the power. Do you understand? <laughs> When they were signing, when they were signing the 2022 budgets, in one breath we are talking about the electoral acts, in another breath we are talking about that budget. That this is not what I presented to you guys. That it was a lot of things went wrong, and the National Assembly <laughs> added their own figures, packed yeah, well, did no. a lot of things. And Mr. President grudgingly, but they still went ahead to sign it. Anyway, it's it is their things. duty to insert and even remove things. Let's give it to them. It's mm. their duty. Uh -huh. Because uh, look at the House of Reps, for example. It's one of the powers of the House of Reps. They are the ones to determine, okay, can this go here, can this go here, you know? So, um, padding the budget, we will never be able to stop padding the budget. <laughs> we, we, we should be able to scrutinize the budget a lot more. But you can't stop them from adding or subtracting from the budget. That is their duty. Hmm. That is their duty. Okay, I have Ojo. Ojo is calling us from Joss. That's Plateau State. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, yeah. Ojo. Is um, Joss? Yeah, Papa GJ, Ayo, and uh, Ibe. Sir, mm. I know we have uh, a lot of our fans in Joss. How is Joss today? They said, uh, they said cold, cold, cold. They wire you. Yeah. <laughs> <good. laughs> Honestly, I would have loved to. 11 degrees. <laughs> 11. GJ, <laughs> maybe GJ was not born. During the time Nikita Khrushchev was uh, president of Russia, Russia. Yes. Are you? your father has not married your mother. <laughs> this 2015, APC has been like Russia. What that is why you see what is happening. APC is like a, a, a one man show, a dictatorial party. Damn. It's under a dictator. So you, I will give them a and they will give them, you people should have pity Badam Kamila and uh, Ahmed Lawa. They are helpless. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> from just. They are not helpless. <laughs> Can be. They've got no. to exercise. They, 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 they are not helpless. They, they are not. It's their choice. Yeah. It's their choice. But you know, you know the way they emerged? You know they were actually endorsed that this is it, that we are not going to give us problem. I we don't want the National Assembly that will give I us problems. Okay, that okay. It's assembly. Good. As students of history, we remember when people were also nominated and the law lawmaker said, no, we want to choose our leaders by ourselves. It did not happen in the House of Reps. Mm, 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 uh -huh. mm. So we've seen, we've seen that it happened. They said, no, we want to choose our leaders by themselves. And they did. So I'm saying it's their choice. So they have the power to not allow some of the things that they are allowing. You see, and you will but see, uh, the, the Senate President was complaining about something that we are going to discuss on Sunday. I don't want to let it out. So I, 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 when I was listening to him this afternoon, I said, oh, some people will begin to call this man a whaler now. Because what's up? He said, I don't believe about this. I don't believe. So it's not yeah. different from what, uh, what we saw the speaker himself, you know, uh, <laughs> do ye yesterday. But I, I think I think the issue here is our, our lawmakers, the political class, advancing a national interest mm. or narrow, greedy, selfish interest because they can afford to seize the moment if they want to. No, oh, yes, it's your choice. They can seize the moment. Mm. What makes you a leader? Mm. The courage to want to do the right thing that mm. is in the larger interest of the country. And in this case, they fail. If you if you listen to 
the speaker's introduction when he was talking about this uh, electoral mm. act, he was saying that why, why would history, it be, why would, judge the Ayo, why would posterity. It be he was fighting waxing lyrical. Oh, God. <laughs> why would he be lamenting? When, it's, when, <laughs> it's, when, when, when it is I, obvious that they were going to I was excited and, uh, that this one want to make history. Yeah, 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 well, history. They stand here no. today, that posterity will judge them. Yeah. Yeah. People, you see, the nature of our politics, people like Naba, who confronted Obasanjo at that mm. time, did they return to the house? Mm. They didn't. Where is it today? They didn't. There was a very vociferous and stubborn uh, House of Arrest member too from Gombe. Mm. He's dead now. Mm. He faced Obasanjo. When Obasanjo went to buy the second-hand uh, presidential jet, you know, he was the one who was attacking him. They made sure he never returned. Mm. So sometimes politicians will ask themselves, ah, is it really worth it? If I confront these people, they won't let me uh, get a, a ticket to return to the mm. house. So you, you then make a choice. You then make a choice between um, pandering to the whims of the powers that be and risking your return to, 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 to the National Assembly. Mm. I have Amma from Abakaliki, that's a boy states. Yo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Thank you, man. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We, 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 we hear you. Right. Um, please, there's just one question I want to ask. I just want to ask. Yeah. If the president fails to sign... The if the president fails to sign the bill mm. after it has been cleaned up, Yes. What next? Well, they have the power to override it. Uh, to override it. But you and I know that they will not use that power. So it then means that we may not uh, have a fresh electoral law. But so the consensus yeah. there, before we finish that, we need this law. Like yesterday. No, you huh? as I, in, we I need this law for this I election. Says without, Unless, I think says without the law, they will not release the time, time to be because two thousand for the election. I, so I like that stand. It, yes. it, it is what you incumbent see? on Mr. President to endorse it. If he doesn't, then I wonder what the the leadership of the National Assembly will just want to do. Sit back and fold their arms. They cannot afford to do that. History will not be kind to them. Mm. The thing is, you know, we we we've even analyzed it here before. The INEC has the power, as given to it by the Constitution, to conduct an election but the way the it deems way fit. Mm. That power is there already. Mm. Again, is INEC prepared to use the power that the Constitution has given it? Go check. INEC does not even need yeah, to go they, begging they are free uh, of, uh, uh, lawmakers. Uh, 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 no, BK, put the, they are different. Are afraid put, of what the court no, will say. Uh, BK, if you remember the BK, um, which is case. Mm -hmm. Put I put differently, the question we are asking is how independent is independent National Electoral Commission? They're independent to a large extent. Okay, nice. I can yeah. tell you that, that we move. We take, mm -hmm. <laughs> we take this break. When we come back, we will talk more. Please don't go away. Thank you for staying with us. Despite various suggestions and pieces of advice which were heeded or not by the authorities, and banditry continues to assault our collective well-being. Now, the Senate has asked President Mamadou Buhari to declare a full-scale war on bandits terrorizing parts of Nigeria after formally declaring them as terrorists, while commending President Mamadou Buhari for ordering air bombardments of terrorist hideouts. The Senate, in a motion, called on the federal government to declare a full-fledged war on the criminals. Julie? What would this change? Ah. I had said before that it is not what we call them that matters, but the strategy that we deploy. People don't see these things early. They just assume that, oh, people come to this program to simply talk and talk. It is not what you call them. If you, you can call them anything, if you don't have the right strategy, they will still continue to terrorize our people. Are we not... Look at what the, the governor of uh, uh, Zafara said. He said it's unfortunate that the earlier gains mm. that were recorded 
mm. have now been eroded. Mm. That is, is unfortunate that we are now witnessing renewed attacks. So why the renewed attacks after they were declared terrorists? People need to ask the question. So it goes back to how are we treating these guys? What is the strategy to exterminate them? Because they really do not deserve to live. But if we think that, okay, piecemeal approach, ah, let us go and attack them in Niger today, then tomorrow we we'll go to Kaduna, that will not work. We are at war. We have to admit to ourselves that we are at war. We have to admit to ourselves that we are at war. Those who have defeated terrorism and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, the, uh, this form of security challenges, they didn't adopt the piecemeal approach. We have been talking about this for so long. And other people too have said that let's have sustained attacks. It's going to take a long time. It's going to cost us a lot of money because those bombs and rockets cost a huge sum of money. Some of them up to 5,000 uh, euros. So we know that it will take us time and it will cost money, but we must be ready for it. We must be ready for it. Let them, if, let those boys even feel that. Look, real war has been declared against them. A situation where everybody stand on the road, mm. singing and dancing. Mm. My, we have the visual my friend, the main express will just so that our friend uh, Kasina sent me um, uh, with the video of those boys singing and dancing on the on the highway. I have said the video before. So much confidence. That's the extent of frustration that people over there feel. You had, you saw what happened yesterday. Uh, I mean, during the program, when the guy said, "Ah, that they killed more than forty people," that he has seen corpses. But we are reporting thirteen. We are reporting fifteen. We are deceiving ourselves. The governor left today. You know, the man complained. The honourable complained that the governor had not visited the place. After our program, the governor mobilized security. This morning, he began to go to. Uh, that uh, Wasagu uh, local government in Kebi State. This is war against our people. So we have to. I don't even think anyone needs to be telling the president to declare full scale war. You can feel it, and people are being killed. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, as commander in chief, declare full scale war. Even uh, Governor Erufa has been asking for it. He's been asking for it. Because some these guys are not they are, they are not smiling at all the way they go about it and the numerical strength they keep you know okay. increasing yeah. every day keep growing every day it's just like if you're in the nuts now and you don't have a uh, source of livelihood or unemployment just go and join these guys they will they will give you ammunition and you are good to go. Ah, yeah, the summary of what they has said is that. We don't have the political will to want to deal with this. That's the summary of it. I mean, when the senior president, you know, charged the president of the country to go full scale, <laughs> I'm asking myself, mm -hmm. what has his advice been all the while? Do you understand? The first time. Do you, do you understand? So for me, it's just it's just matter. The president has access to a wealth of information, credible intelligence. Mm. He does not need anyone to tell him. He's in mm. commander in chief of the armed yes. forces. Mm -hmm. The box stops on his table. Mm. He, he doesn't need anyone to remind him. I'll be shocked if he didn't hear the governor of uh, Niger State saying that 220 people were killed in 17 days in oh, his state. Yes. 220 persons killed are in 17 days in Niger State. Why you are talking about people killed? Look at the number of attacks that he talked about. 50. 50 attacks. Sir. In January. Over a short period. In one 50 state. attacks. In so, one so does okay. anyone need to tell Mr. President that, 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 that what will happen in hands anywhere in Nigeria? Yes. What you see here is like a normal police and military roadblock. Are you saying that the president is not aware that these guys are yeah, yeah, yeah. like this? <laughs> or that, or that, that they've turned our eye away. Look at, look at. I'm having fun. Look at, this is fun. And have enough time with confidence to video themselves. Yes, no, they, yes. they don't no, do they are to send a message. Yeah, I mean, they that we're in charge. Like mind games. They are playing exactly. mind games with the military. That we're in charge. That look. Come, if you, if you, you, have, you, 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 you think that you can exterminate us, but come we're and here. see us. We are enjoying. We are here. Not one, not two, not hmm. three, not four. And they're just so, There's no alternative. Yeah, well, there was, you so, saw the video. Okay, you, you, those speakers are where Turji was said to have told. 
they were going to do a by election, and they said, Don't even think of doing that by election unless, yeah, you, because they are the one unless you said to me, They are pointing him, they, they have to take money to him before he allowed them to do election. Kachala Turji, who is still is in, in his 20s, he's already behaving like a governor. That's if he's not one yet. <laughs> I mean, if, the man, if they can afford to impose, impose taxes. <laughs> okay, Ada is calling us from Joss. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us, Ada. Good evening, Ada. Yes, Ada from Joss. For journalist, and God will bless you. Oh, I want to share this view that uh, the, the, the army, uh, the British should uh, uh, approach the whole thing with, uh, from a coordinated point of view, as you can see. This idea they will uh, finish with Zafarat and then they will allow them to flee. They will now move to either Sokoto, Niger, or what are you, Talaba. It doesn't make sense. There are for the lawmakers uh, all along, even when Babajide was talking about uh, you know, the, uh, that is, uh, the delegate issue, I was just laughing. I mean, what uh, you say is correct, you but I know it's not You take me the laugh, I mean? I was laughing because it will not work. I you take me the laugh, uh, okay. It's it, 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 it because... <laughs> It's in their own interest, not because of the parties. As far as I'm concerned, they don't have the leaders to veto President Buhari. And now, President Buhari, just like one of the callers answered that question, my prayer is that President Buhari decide to sign it as a legacy. If he refuses to sign it, I can tell you for free that these people will not do anything about it. They won't. I'm telling you, it's really unfortunate how our lawmakers to allow executive decisions to now overwhelm them. Is this how it is done? There's nothing wrong with the war. It's a system. If you just worry to reset today. <laughs> what to Thank you, Madam Ada. Thank you, Ada. You can feel Always the watching us from just. Yeah. Always coming us from just. <laughs> you they laugh me, Abi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so going back to these are uh, tax collectors mm. <laughs> because uh, because the collectors. We can the calls of people mm. tax collectors. <laughs> no, these people the real tax collectors. <laughs> Look at the message that they sent to some communities in Zafar and all that. You either pay us or forget peace. You, some people, and some, and some communities who stood up to them, yeah. wherever you see them slaughter many people, mm. yeah. it's because those yeah. ones refuse Opposed to cooperate. To if you don't refuse to cooperate, mm. then they will slaughter you. There are many communities where it's already a way of life. Mm. They've agreed that, mm. okay, to have access to their farms, they will cooperate because with these people. Because they're thinking survival. The, so, for some communities, it's, 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 not, it's something new. So they will try to resist, yeah. mm, and then you see they will come back mm, and just slaughter people. And they are so true. wicked that when they now kill, and some of you have fled to the neighboring communities, exactly. you want to come back and pick the corpses of your loved ones and give them decent burial. They will refuse to allow you to access your community to pick the corpses <laughs> of your loved ones. <laughs> Sometimes they burn them so that the humiliation is complete. <laughs> this is what we are facing, and we are deserving, deserving ourselves that we are not at war. You know? Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> we, we heard that um, in the next 17 months, now nah, it's 16 months, that we'll find a solution to these things. We are counting with 400 and 80 something days. Yes. Yeah. So we are watching and waiting. We are watching and waiting. It's very annoying. It's very annoying. It's very annoying. Oh, no. It's very annoying. Well, wow. let's review one of the issues discussed on this platform on Sunday, which borders on the impropriety of President Mohamed Buhari stepping on some national insignias during the 2022 Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration in Abuja. While some presidential aides sees nothing wrong with it, some retired diplomats and protocol officers opposed what happened and insisted that there is no justification for it. Jide? Yes. Um, we still have some very experienced diplomats and even former uh, chief uh, protocol officers to presidents. We some of them are still alive. They communicate, they uh, express their concerns. And I can tell you that uh, the issue that we discussed on Sunday mm -hmm. was born out of concerns raised by some of them. retired um, uh, ambassadors and career ambassadors. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, protocol uh, people, so they rose to the top. Mm. They are still alive, and they have their own group. So the concern was by by them. Mm. In the past, what we simply had, we just lay the red carpet. But these days, people will go and design um, the coat of arms. 
and then used it as carpet for this kind of event. And this uh, career diplomats are saying, no, this is wrong. It had not been like this before. Unfortunately, even when people argue that, okay, uh, you know, there's actually a, di a difference between presidential seal and the coat of mm -hmm. arms. Mm -hmm. The president has no right to stand on the president, I mean, on the, the coat, coat of, of arms. arms. But the presidential seal also includes the close of coat of arms. Mm -hmm. He has the right to stand on that. It's a personalized emblem of the president. Nobody mm -hmm. is arguing about that. But the unfortunate thing is that for some of these events, you will now even see people who are not president, who are just ordinary people, you know, uh, uh, working on even on these things. That is the point that bothers those people. That national symbols are not meant to be trampled upon. And they don't want to see a time when even our flag, people will start stepping on our and walking on the flag. So this is the thing. The, the excuse is the, the alibi is not simply to go and get pictures from the no. U.S. and other places. We always say that, ah, it was wrong. Somebody said, oh, if we, if we stole so much money, America we know. But is that same America <laughs> that we are using as the standard? <laughs> when even when you are talking about diplomatic etiquette, <laughs> you still find that across the world, you still find the U.K. and even France rated higher than America. But that's where we're going to look, for example, just to justify what has happened. The people, no one is saying, look, the president cannot stand on his seal. Mm. But there is a distinction mm. between the seal of the president and the coat, coat of, of arms. And nobody, mm. if you design anything that is not the seal of the president, mm. and it's just the coat of arms, then you can, nobody should stand on it, including the president. And some of them are even saying that they do not even want, they want the red carpet, let the red carpet just be there, that even this one, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that they don't want, that's the, that's the, uh, their argument. Hmm. Sam, what do you make of this? There are, there are conventions, this is all bother around, you know, conventions. Sometimes you don't find them written, you know, uh, in, in any, in any uh, book form or mm. documentary mm. form. But they are conventions, and and those who are professionals, those who are ambassadors, carry ambassadors who understand the way these things play, mm. okay, mm. have have offered the explanations. Yes. My my concern here is that not just the coat of arms. Sometimes you find that the national flag mm. placed in the offices of some the leaders members. have coat of arms on them, and you ask yourself if the national flag has designed or conceptualized you have should a have coat a coat of arms. Of arms. So it, it will people seem that it will seem sovereign. Th Don't you understand? Our it, it will seem that those who are meant to mind this protocol, you know, uh, issues don't even understand what is involved, because the governors in some states are guilty of it. You walk into the offices, you find that our, our, mm. our national flag is not <laughs> doesn't appear the way it should yes. ordinarily. Mm. So these are some of the things you know that you find playing out, and I think that we need to take lessons. You know, from it, there are national symbols that we should not toy should with. Not we we take them as ordinary. It's just like you know, uh, laying the national flag on the floor and say, "No, it's a piece of cloth. Okay. People can no, work no, on it." No. It doesn't work that way. Okay, to enlighten us more, joining us via Zoom for more insights into this issue is the retired Nigerian diplomat, that uh, Ambassador Joe Keshi, who served in many countries, including Togo, Ethiopia, Belgium, the Netherlands, Namibia, and Sierra Leone. Ambassador Keshi became the country's top career diplomat when he served as the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He's also served as the permanent secretary, cabinet secretary, responsible for the meetings of the Federal Executive Council presided over by president before he retired after 35 years diplomatic career thank you for joining us ambassador hello ambassador are you there thank you thank you for having thank you for having me all right sir can you please enlighten us on this um the proper way to do it, the, 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 the coat of arms, the use of the coat of arms, and even the distinction between it and the presidential seal. Well, 
I, uh, I I listened to the to the introduction, the conversation you gentlemen have had before, and I think that uh, you've made all the points that need to be made. That uh, the, the national symbols, you know, need to be properly represented because they, they represent a lot in the life of a nation. You know. Um, the, the flag, for example, represents our belief, vision, strength, you know. And um, so with the national, uh, I mean, so with the coat of arms, when you look at what we have on the coat of arms, you see quite a, lo a number of things that, mm. that is very interesting, uh, you know, uh, symbolize, for example, the, uh, the, the River Niger and, uh, and uh, Benue. Yes, the, the black shield itself represents the future land of Nigeria, and the two horses represent dignity, and That's it true. goes on and on. Now, those things you are not things that you simply trample upon, you know, at any time, or more especially as we have seen, as you as you pointed out in the in the case of the coat of arms, you don't get up one morning and begin to redesign the coat of arms as. Uh, as has been done in this country, and I believe it's still being done. Some will put uh, the coat of arms in the middle of the, uh, the national flag. Some will uh, add the uh, gold trimmings to the edges of the national flag. No, the national flag was created by an act of parliament. And the, the coat of arms also was created by an act of parliament. You know, so you don't just wake up one morning and decide that you are going to, you know, redesign this because you want to make profit by embellishing it or making it look even more, more beautiful. But with regard to the issue you are discussing, I, I think the, the problem we have here is that uh, we're not so sure exactly whether the president is standing on the presidential, on the presidential seal or just on the coat of arms. Now, let me, let me make this clear that even the presidential seal that we talk about in a country like the United States, where some people have been posting a lot of pictures, the presidential seal was established by law. So it does not that somebody gets of design and is, you know, the president started to use it. And secondly, it was meant for the president's communication with uh, Congress. So it, that's why it's called a seal, because once he writes Congress, he seals up with the coat of, I mean, with the presidential seal. Of course, they've used this for other things. But exact, it was initially set up for the president's communication with the National Assembly. And I'm not too sure, I might be wrong, whether our own was even established by law and the rest of it. But the point that needs to be made, in my view, is that this whole uh, incident probably is as a result of um, a lack of uh, deep knowledge of the significance of, mm. of these national symbols. Yeah. And somebody simply wanted to, uh, 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 you know, uh, make the occasion look nice, make the president himself look nice, but it has created more embarrassment for the president. So I just think that what needs to be done, in my view, is for the secretary to the government to put up a committee, look into all these issues, including the issues of the national flag. And issue is circular, as was done some years ago, correcting people that this is the call of the, I mean, there was a time we had so many colors representing the national flag, but it was addressed to uh, the, um, uh, you know, authorities issuing um, circulars, reminding people that this is the color of the Nigerian flag and that you cannot, you cannot design the national flag because you want to make money or because you want to make it look more beautiful, no. I think that this is the only way we can resolve this uh, problem. I don't think they meant any harm, but I just think that it's born out of lack of knowledge of the, sim of the symbolism of uh, the coat of arms and to a large extent the national flag. During your time, what was it like? Were you simply using the red carpet and, and, uh, and, 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 and that was it? Because what we see here, uh, we are seeing coat of arms I mean, uh, all over the place, and several other people standing on it. So even if the argument uh, was okay, the president was right to stand on his uh, on his seal. How about other people that we've seen? 
We've seen other people uh, standing on it uh, from that picture that we showed. We've shown. Well, sir, that's that's exactly what I said earlier. That you know, sometimes when we want to do something out of overzealousness, we go for the kill. Mm -hmm. Look, for many years, this is not the first uh, Remembrance Day that will be celebrated. Go back to the ones you did a couple of years ago and uh, see. Simply, they just had red carpets all over the place. But as I said, I think somebody wanted to you know add more embellishment, uh, beautify the. Uh, the occasion by adding that. But look, these are not things you just get up and add on your own. Either because you are the chief of protocol or somebody, a like contractor wanting to make money, you know, brings it to you and say, ah, this will look nice, uh, the president will like it, and then you use it. Some of my colleagues in the past who were chief of, uh, who were chief of protocol has, has actually rejected some of these things. I'm very clear to the contractors and to some others, including some uh, ADCs to the president who didn't know, you know, uh, some of these things. The, the chief of protocols has stood their grounds and said, no, you cannot use it this way. This is the way it must be used. And they agreed and they comply with it. So that's why I'm making the strong point that I think those who are there today probably don't understand all these things. The, the, the secretary to the government needs to, you know, uh, look into it and issue you know, uh, service-wide circular, reminding people of the of the significance of these symbols and how, you know, it should be used. As the, what is most important is to stress the fact that you cannot on your own redesign the national flag. You cannot on your own beautify the national flag. Or nor can you do the same with the coat of arms. These are strong symbols of unity, of strength, of dignity of the country, you, you just can't treat it anyhow. It needs to be treated with respect. And I think this is what uh, they need to do. And it will just, uh, you know, um, uh, rest the, the conversation. And by the way, let me, <laughs> let me make this last point. Um, I saw that a number of people have been, uh, have been uh, sending pictures of uh, some pre uh, presidents of the United States, you know, either dancing on the presidential uh, seal or, you know, yes, the presidential seal of America still has the coat of arms. But the point is that the fact that they are doing that does not mean that we must copy. You know, we're in a democracy. Are we copying the way the United States government, I mean, uh, constitution is working? Because we borrowed it from there. You can't justify that. No, we can't be like the United States when we point out your mistakes when it comes to obeying the constitution. And then when it suits you, you go back and say no. Yeah, the president of America has done this. We also can do it. Come on, let's let's be let's be let's be consistent in the way we do things. But for me, the 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 SDF needs to resolve this problem and very quickly too, because I'm sure sometimes in the near future some of these mistakes will reoccur mm. if we do not address it today. I, I want to thank you, Ambassador Jokeshi. Thank you for your contribution. We really appreciate your contribution and uh, the, the, the clarification yes. because it has been a kind of um, oh. a <laughs> back and forth. You know, the, you know, one good thing is um, the truth is constant. Mm. The whole argument around those who thought that it was wrong to bring up this matter was just the whole alibi was just to bring American president. No, American president. Oh, he can, the American the president that's stood that's on his seal. Mm. But we've seen our protocol. We've our seen protocol. we've seen in that video. Mm. We've seen other people who are not presidents of Nigeria standing on the same thing. You saw even mm. the, even the military. Some of those mm. military officers mm. were standing mm. on it mm. by convention. Were they supposed to stand on it? Mm. We saw civilians too. Just mm. take a look at it. They mm. just designed it, filled the whole environment with it, and people mm. were just standing on it. So yeah, you don't want to be corrected. The SGF. Uh, we should take I, I, it off. I no, our business is not with uh, with uh, with uh, presidential mm -hmm. spokesmen. Mm -hmm. Our business mm -hmm. with the SGF. Mm -hmm. And this this is the something that the villa. yes, mm -hmm. they, you just have to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's everywhere. Look at the person in pink. Is he not standing no. on it? Is mm -hmm. he the Nigerian president? Even the vice president. Is yes. The so you use the you 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 you. In fact, you by time by time they are done, everybody will work ah. on it and probably clean yeah. their feet and you know walk away. But I, I think I'd like to make a point before we just, um, you know, make our exit. Nigeria 
has to be treated as a brand. And every brand has a manual. There has to be consistency. Mm. Do mm -hmm. those at the helm of affairs understand that this country is a brand that should be marketed? Yes. If they do, then they would have to understand that a brand, every brand must have a brand manual. It is in those manuals that you discover what you need to do and what you're not supposed to do mm. in yes. terms of mm. positioning and, and projection. Yes, no, well, uh, thank you for that contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just, Nicola, I just, hope, that, I just hope that we will change as a nation. Yes. One of those ambassadors said, I've said it several times, that when I was chief of protocol of our country, Nigeria has a problem with protocol of events and protocol of good governance and good system. Hmm. What to do with that? I want to thank Ambassador Joe Keshi too for the yeah, like clarification. Yes. It's very important. Yeah. The person that should know. Yeah. Um, mm. And that's all I take today. You can watch the reprint broadcast tonight at 11 and join us on Journalist Hangout on Sunday, 1 30 to 3 30 pm. You can watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash CBC News Nigeria. I'm Marie Uzubako. See you tomorrow and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>